Hi everyone, I'm George Call here to introduce a new series of three paintings or three tutorials for one painting called Riverbank. And uh, today was block in. So what we started with was locating maybe four or five basic shapes on the painting. And then we started filling in with basic value color. So I'll go through that step by step with you as we go through this 30 minute tutorial. What else? Um, you can find this image uh, on georgecallgreatart.com under photo references. You can download from there. And uh, the encouraging thing is I want to do is say, keep painting. Paint with other people, get outside and paint, get critiques, and tune in every week and I'll have a new set of paintings for you to work side by side with me in your studio that you can go at your own speed. Okay, that should be it. Let's start painting. All right, bye-bye. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to this week's uh, tutorials. This is gonna be, hopefully, a three-part tutorial, and the, um, the uh, name that I've given this is uh, Riverbank. You can see I'm very creative in my names here. Uh, something short and sweet so I can put it in my, uh, you know, my uh, YouTube uh, category and all that kind of stuff. The exercise this week is we're working with worms. You can see here on my screen, um, on the right here, that uh, we have a lot of warm colors here, uh, along with this contrasting white and uh, snow in light and shadow. And then we have water, river banks. So we have some basic good shapes here and some good dark. So it's a great composition. Everything kind of leads back here, lights to darks, and then this kind of hourglass thing here. You see it comes in, goes out. All that is good compositional stuff. If you want to download this photograph, you can do so by going to georgecallgreatart.com and uh, my website and look for photo references and that's where you can download this. The thing that uh, I do in the field as well as in the studio, if there's something in the composition I don't like, I get rid of it. And I don't know if this tree is really going to make a lot of sense over here. I think, I think we need that sky and um, uh, balancing out this uh, this big tree we have here and that would be enough. So with that uh, these are my materials. I'm working with a 10, an 8, no a 6, and a uh, 4. I think today I'll probably just be using these bigger guys. Um, here's my mixing palette knife, my scraper for cleaning myself off the my glass. And, of course, I have my paper towels, my odorless turf off to one side. So today is block-in. What we want to do today is to cover this 16 by 20 with paint. But first we start by figuring out where our major shapes are. And so I see a shape here with the tree. There's a shape here with the water. Big shape here with the bank. So we're going to come up with about five or six basic shapes. So I'm going to make a drawing color. Ultra blue, burnt sienna, a little bit of gray, some white. I'm going to throw some yellow ochre in there because we're working with worms. So what I'm working with is a basic palette here and then some additions. So I have Ultra Blue, Permanent Red, Lemon Yellow, uh, Naples, a Naples Yellow Deep, and uh, Cold Gray. Most of these are Rembrandts. This, uh, here, this yellow is a Gamblin. These uh, are my old standbys, Burnt Sienna, uh, Viridian, and Yellow Ochre. And I'm going to be switching from Yellow Ochre to Raw Sienna here, I think, in a couple weeks and trying that. Over here on your left, you see some warmer colors, some cad yellows. 
And that's left over from some painting I did over the weekend. I was working on faces and portraits. So that's what that's all about. So anyway, since this is going to be a lot of worms, I might as well just leave them on there and see if we can use them. So I'm seeing if I have an old scrubber or something that's kind of worn down a little bit. This one's worn a little bit, so I'll work on that. So I'm going to be drawing with a number six. So let's work on shapes. So here we have a bank coming in. Here we have another. Looks like we have a shore right here. Then we have coming into a big dark here. Here's a big dark right in this area. And it's a big V shape. So here's a shape. One, two, three, and four. So those are my big major shapes. And that's the way I like you to think about it. It's kind of one way to train your brain to try to figure out how to start with these compositions instead of intensely drawing the tree and then finding it's in the wrong place. Start thinking big shapes and working from there. After we have the big shapes in, let's break them up. So I'm going to go back to Burnt Sienna, Ultra Blue, Yellow Ochre, and fine tune this. Within this is a bank with some darks. And these darks kind of show a pattern here. There's another pattern of weeds coming out here. And then of course we have a big dark here. And we have a lot of darks in here. Now you can see why I'm using a use brush. I'm doing a kind of tough scraping motion with these things. And of course I need to make some more product. So let's go back to making ultra blue, burnt sienna, a little bit of gray, a little bit of yellow ochre. Getting a little bit of turp in here, so to make it going a little quicker, thinner. This is a thin stage. There's also, I think, some reflection in here. So I have these angles going different ways so I can train myself to know where I'm at. I think here there's another bank here. And then this kind of goes like this. And this is a kind of a dark bank in here. So you can see I'm starting to fill these in with very light colors, some darks to figure out where things are going to be. And then that kind of helps me figure out if my shapes are in the right place. Let me go back to these darks I see here on this. And there's a big triangle of dark down here.
All right, let's switch over to warms now. And this is a good time to step back and take a look at what you've got so far and see if it's feeling like it's in the right place because that is key for this stage. Do we have those four or five major shapes in the right place? And the reason I ask that question now is because it's a lot easier to change now than later. All right, let's start with a warmer mixture. Let's go to yellow ochre, gray, gray, yellow ochre, gray. Kind of makes a real dull, warm color. It's, it's really nice. And then over here, I'm going to go Naples on the side. Kind of variation of what we have here because we have lighter warms and warmer warms. Okay, so let's get big brush. I put a few branches in there. I should probably have waited until I got this warms in. That's why I only put three or four in. I said, stop it. And let's get over to the warm category. So add some turp and let's get these in. So it's real thin. And now I'm going to, with my paper towel, I'm going to thin this. I'm going to thin these. And let's go back and get a little bit more product. And let's go a little lighter this time to the light, lighter pile. And I think we have lighter over here. Let me even lighten that up even more with some white. And I think I need some over here too. So I have darker worms and I have lighter worms. I'll put some lighter ones up in here too. All right, let's go down into the lower neighborhood here and put these splattering of worms down here. Don't have to be perfect, just get in the general neighborhood here. And I think we need some, I'm mixing some of the dark and the light together for this bag. And we're right here on the bag. Oops. Let me make it a little lighter, got a little too dark there. And that will do the do the bank. I think we'll be some along the. I wonder if you guys could uh, mute your microphones unless you have a question for the Zoomers. Somebody has a microphone on. I can hear. Is that Jan? All right, let's go back to darks. I think I need some darks coming off of here. And let's get some 
start filling in these areas here. So let's go back to some ultra blue. I'm trying to do a thorough mixture here. And I see some strong dark here. And I see some lighter dark here. If the color's not right, that's not as important as your value. They say value is really important in this business. I'm going to go back and make some more dark, ultra blue, burnt sienna. This time I add a little viridian and some red to kill the viridian. Makes a deep, dark, red, brown, dark, dark. And we're going to go into this area with it. Let me lighten some of that. I added some uh, lightener to this, which was that yellow ochre mixture next to it. Let's get this out here. There's a dark jetting out from this bank here. And I want to make sure I get that. I think it's important. And let's just make some designs for... And I'm still just... In other words, I'm not doing straight lines. I'm angle, angle, angle. So let's practice that angle. and horizontals. See how there's a lot of darks coming out from the center of this? That's what I just did with that scrumble technique. Seems to be more on the left side than the right side. So I will bring in more warms on the right side. That's what I'm doing right now. Seems to be a warm design, some warms up in this area. And over here I see some darker values. And with my darks, I'm going to put some more at the base here of these worms here and here. This is important, it's directional darks here show there's a bank, this angle here. All right. Enough of this. Let's move over. Get some other neighborhood. Let me check my time, see how I'm doing. And we're 20 minutes into this, and we've got about 10 more to go. So let's start thinking about um, sky. 
snow. Let's do snow so we have bright snow, which we'll put a little Naples in. And on the cool stuff, we'll add a little Ultra. So I have I'm working down in here, so I want to have some warms and some cools. And I think I have to change brushes because there's so much contamination with the darks in that uh, number 10. So I'll move down to my 6. If you have an 8, that'll work too. So I'm going to be putting these cools down in the shadow area and I'll do a little bit more of this off camera because it's just going to take some time. So wherever I think there's going to be shadow, and I think the sun's coming this way, so I'm going to have shadows on these banks and I'll have lights in here. And so my warms are going to go in this area here. <coughs> so here I go with that. Now there's a lot of contamination area here, so be careful. And what I will do off camera is fill in these white blanks, these halos I have in here. So I just don't bore everybody and do it on camera. All right, let's go over to the water. So I'm going to add more yellow ochre and put it in here. And more blue. In here. Should be using a bigger brush for it. Now I know there's darker blues and lighter blues and all that here, but I think for block in, let's just get some good basic color in here with a value in it. And for the sky, let's add more white. And let's get up in here. So you can see I'm putting a lot of turf in it and covering this area up real good. And again, I'm being a little sloppy. And I'll, off camera, I'll probably get a little closer in here. And I'll work on that in here and all these places. I think I also need some sky holes in here too. So I'll probably having some inroads in here. I think there's also some up here, there's going to be some shrubbery of some sort. So I'm just going to try to bring up some of the darks from down below and see if I can cheat that way to get some of that stuff up here, which didn't do a very good job, so I will get a little bit darker and put some of that up there. All right, time for me to step back and look at this thing because I think I've got paint on everything. And that's the start of our Riverbank painting, okay. Um, good start. I think my shapes are in the right place. Uh, I know I have hard edges and I have to soften them out, which we will do and as we proceed with this painting. But I think for now, shapes are in the right place. So that's what you want to be asking yourself. Are your shapes in the right place? And 
getting some basic value color inside of that. Now, tomorrow I know that probably some of my shadows are too dark or too light, and I will be changing that. But right now I'm going to be softening my edges with my knife. See how that softens edges? You can also soften edges with paper towel. And I think I need more light over in this section. I just picked up some light from my knife. And you see that really did the job. So I'll smash that in. And I had a nice shadow shape in there too and I lost it. So I'll get some dark in there. All right, my hard part is going to be over in here. I have a lot of complicated darks and lights, and I want to try to get some paint around these corners and up to these edges and not contaminate them so much. So I'll be working with that. First of all, I'm still working with softening edges with you. And you can see I can work some of these edges into the lighter color without contamination. But you see, I'm also drying my brush quite a bit. It's starting to get painterly now, isn't it? I can also go into the snow area and do the same. Get some more blue in there. Oh, too much blue. I keep getting the contamination off my brush. And that's how I can get in all these little corners. And I think there's some nice snow coming off in this lower area. Hard to get that on there right now because it's so wet down there. Okay, how am I doing on time? Looks like I'm coming up on time. Yep, I am. So, what you're going to see me, or hear about me doing is all this shadow working here around these edges. Of course, I got some contamination on that last stroke. But that's what I'm going to be doing. Well, this was block in. Let's review. We figured out five or, you know, four or five basic shapes. One, two, three, four. Then we started getting a little bit more design inside the major shapes. Here and here. And then we started putting in big blocks of color. And that's what we did. So the whole... 16 by 20 is covered now in paint. Okay, so that brings us to the end. YouTubers and you screens, thanks for coming by. And we will start with part two tomorrow of Riverbank. All right. Thanks for coming by.